10 years ago, I was teaching a class at Forest High School in Paul Chicago, Rutgers. In the class, we were reading a book by Nelson Oliver called The Neon Wilderness. Now, Nelson Oliver writes about the gritty underworld of Chicago. He writes about the people and the places in which they inhabit, and vice versa. We were given the assignment to write about a space turned place for us. Mm -hmm. Can you look at the whole quote? Coupled with a quote by Li Fu Tuan, it reads, What begins as undifferentiated space becomes place when we get to know it better and endow with value. So I thought this was a very powerful concept, and it's one that I carry with me throughout my life. I wasn't sure if I wanted to stay in my hometown all four years of my high school experience. I felt like I needed to get out into the world in order to find myself and um, what I wanted out of the next stage in life. So I worked with my guidance counselor to find the perfect program, and I did. Uh, it was started by a man named Kent Ferguson, who had been doing experimental and experiential education in Santa Barbara, California for like 30 years. Um, it was called the School Down Under, and we had two campuses spread across both islands in New Zealand, the first of which was at Hyman Manor. So Hyman Manor started out as a private state, and then was a monastery. It turned into a whole to healing center, and then it became the site for our school. We all arrived at this amazing building um, with this great history, but it was just space to us. We didn't know Hyden any more than we knew each other. Our community consisted of about 40 people from all walks of life, from all over the world. Um, everyone was encouraged to be a teacher as well as a student. And our lessons took place inside and outside the classroom. Um, we uh, had a sustainable organic farm on our campus. Uh, we created art. Uh, we went hiking and caving. Uh, we took risks and we tried new things. We went fishing and we acted like fish. We played instruments and we went surfing. We made things with our hands. We listened with each other. We shared with each other. We grew together. Um, there were kids that were struggling with their sexuality. There were kids that were struggling with substance abuse. Uh, bottom line is everyone had their own story. Um, and the sooner that we realized that everyone was the way they were for a reason, that's when our sense of place and community grew stronger and stronger. So all of a sudden we have this incredible community. Um, people of all ages and backgrounds and statuses. Um, it didn't matter who we were before we came there. We created this sense of place together. Um, and uh, it, you know, we had this amazing community. It was the first time in my life that I knew what that word meant in the truest sense. Um, so I came back to Lake Worth for my senior year of high school. I was really excited to get back into the darkroom and develop all the roles of film that I had taken while I was abroad. Um, I now knew more about what I wanted out of college, so I went to Colorado College, and I planned on proposing a photojournalism major while I was there. I really loved the idea of sharing stories through imagery. Um, and while I loved the job printing process, I knew the world was going digital, and I thought I'd better you know, get a hold on that. So I started working for the communications department at my college. I'd go around campus and take pictures at student events um, and programs, and things like this would start happening inside my camera. And this, and this, I thought this was awesome. I was literally pressing buttons like I was a five-year-old playing video games. And while I thought this was really, really great, um, the school probably just wanted like a nice, crisp photograph of the dance workshop for their website. <laughs> so this is kind of like a red flag that maybe representational little commercial photography wasn't my calling. So I started taking all sorts of classes. I took video art, and small metal sculptures. I was taking our history classes. I soon learned, you know, that art is totally boundless. It doesn't have to fit into this rigid category of art, draw, drawing, and painting, or photography. So as soon as I learned that, you know, all these things that were so much a part of me, the collecting, the documenting, and the storytelling, could be translated into an artistic media, that's what I did. I learned that what I was so drawn to was called installation art. And I started making weird, real pieces like this where I'd make my four roommates stand at openings for like four hours. <laughs> that were made out of trash and old electronics. Really practical, very saleable pieces of artwork, right? Not really, but I didn't care. I was getting to know myself as an artist, and I was experimenting, and I was really enjoying the process. Uh, by my senior year, I had sort of diddled and dabbled and done the dark room and the wood shop, and um, at, for my senior thesis show, um, I held at my apartment and my studio, and it was aptly named Space Becomes Place Photographic Installation of Apartment Art. So all my collections of old photographs and family slides, 
uh, ocular tests and old sheet music, buttons, they all swirl around until they found their place in my space. And in doing so, turning my space into place. So I pinned buttons to the wall and I had installations of old lights and projections, old and new. Um, I was doing an ongoing photo study of people with messy rooms, so I laid it out on my bed and used my messy room as a frame. Every single inch of my apartment was a piece of art in one way, shape, or form. And I really enjoyed getting to turn my space into place and endowing it with my artistic value. I knew that someday I'd go back to New Zealand. It was such a special experience for me, and that's what I intended to do um, after I left college. So conveniently enough, I got a call from my friend Katie, who had some time to travel before she started her job in January. So that's what we did. We went back, and for the first three months we were in the country, we traveled and adventured. We kind of just let the magic of the country take us where it would until we found ourselves this place. So, Rongo means peace in the native language of New Zealand Maori. And I had heard about this place three years prior from Ken Ferguson, the headmaster of the school down under. And I sort of put it on the list of places that, would make me, that we might go. Um, so, Katie and I lucked out and we got a spot there as whoopers. So, whoopers, that stands for Willing Workers and Organic Farms. You go and you work somewhere and turn for accommodation and food and the cultural merchant aspect. Um, so, Rongo was started by a man named Paul Murray. He's Australian. He lived in Japan for 10 years and worked as a photojournalist there. And in 2004, he moved to Karamea with his wife, Sanai, and they now have these two beautiful children. Um, what started as an art residency program quickly grew legs into this multifaceted art business where people of all creative backgrounds could come together and share their stories and their talent for mutual benefit. The result was Paul's biggest project to date, the Living in Peace Project. So the Living in Peace Project fosters and values art and travel and permaculture and education. And Rongo is the site where all of this takes place. So in addition to being a hostel, Rongo has a radio station that plays 24-7 to the local community. Whippers and guests alike are encouraged to go there and put on their radio show. Um, there's multiple farms uh, and gardens on the campus uh, where you can pick and grow your own food um, and play with it. Um, the entire place is like a contemporary art museum. From floor to, wall, or floor to ceiling, the whole place is covered. You can write on the walls, you can uh, gain a mural, you can pick up an instrument. Everyone is encouraged to be an active artist. Um, talk about turning space into place. It was totally epic, and I felt so, so lucky to be there. Um, part of the history of Rongo was hosting a resident artist for the summer. And the woman that was lined up fell through. So Paul was like, you know, if you know of anyone that might be interested, he was like, pick me, right? Um, I was like, I'm by no means an established artist. It's what I studied in school. It's what I want to do with my life. Um, and here's some of my work. So after checking it out, he was like, done. The artist cabin's yours for the summer. No rules, you're free to create what you want. So I was like on cloud nine. What an amazing experience for me to go out into the world um, and stretch my legs uh, as an artist. So I really wanted to pay tribute to all the things that made Rongo so special. So travel and color and music. Um, I, I started collecting materials and I had this idea of stretching cassette tape and poster stamps. So I made a site specific installation in the hallway there. Um, in addition to doing a static piece, I wanted to get people involved in my art blogs there. So I had this idea of making a message in a bottle wall where people could write their morning, messages please, and put it in um, so it serves like a time capsule and people could get out of this place for a long time. Did you know that lesbian um, gave so five like special and transgender youth are more than twice as likely to build the wall. As non -LGBT so, early in addition, LGBTs are twice as likely to be attacked by another individual. So, the idea is that everyone in the country, all these people who travel to this place, this is the table with material on Wednesday, Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. So, what I do is I have people traveling find a bottom of the road, traveling with, and they take it off. And find one of my buttons to place it. I'd sew it back on, and my buttons would travel along with them. So at the end of my stay at Rongo, I collected over 120 buttons that were connected to different countries. And it was really special having all of these people in Rongo. Just check it. You never know where you might want. I learned so much about myself as an artist. I met a lot of amazing people. I was able to collaborate. and. After that, I came back to the States. I hopped on a bus and did a still photography for some friends that were doing a film 
on um, music festivals. And after Burning Man, I came back home, totally broke, but exhausted. Uh, I started curating art at our local brewery and working for an artist in Chicago, sort of trying to figure out the Chicago art scene and how I might fit into it. Um, and my mom's a realtor in town, so she's sort of aware of spaces, and um, we were curious about one in particular, so we went and checked it out, and we were totally floored by the space. Um, you know, it had been a, a florist for about 30 years, and then it had been sitting vacant for two, so it was in kind of rough shape, but we saw the potential, and we thought, you know, wow, like, dream big, what if we could turn this space into place here? Um, and for Cecilia Lanyon. So uh, Cecilia and I actually met when we were 11 years old in our class. Um, we went our separate ways to college and she studied art and advertising in San Francisco. And she found herself at sort of the tra same transitional juncture that I was. Um, so she had actually just finished an intensive course on uh, fostering female entrepreneurship and writing a business plan. So the timing was really ideal. Uh, we decided to put our heads together and turn space into place in our hometown that fostered our creative uh, voices when growing up. So we took ownership of the space and we decided to work as hard as we could to make our dreams come true. Uh, the ball started rolling and then our stopped. We are now the, the proud co-owners of Rainbow Gallery, Studio, and Innovative Retail in downtown Lake Forest. Our building is 4,000 square feet and it's divided in three separate sections. Um, our main gallery uh, hosts exhibitions of local, national, and international artists at six feet run. Today, we've exhibited over 23 shows uh, with artists working in different media. In our back studio, we have resident artists that run studio space from us. We also have furniture showroom back there and an additional gallery. Uh, we also have a studio where people of all ages and abilities can take workshops and classes. Um, Reinvent Innovative Retail started with around 30 artisans, and we now represent over 150 artists work from all over the country. We aim to blur the line between the curator and the consumer using art with product, and we want people to feel good about supporting independent artists in handmade business. Um, we host events and programs and lectures, and we encourage our community to come out and take, take part in the creative dialogue. So there's so many incredible stories that have come out of Reinvent. It takes me weeks to cover all of them, so I'm just going to pick one. One that's near and dear to my heart has to do with this guy. So, his name is Shota Kawahara, and we actually met at Bronco in New Zealand. Um, after I left, I got an email from him, and he said, you know, I've been a traveling artist for years, I've exhibited all over the world, I'm kind of at the place in my career that I want to bring my work to the States. You know me, you know my work, um, I trust you to communicate for me, would you be interested in being my art manager on the other side? So, this was before anything happened with Reinvent, I had no idea what this would entail. But I did know that I believed in him and the power of his artwork, and I told him I'd do everything uh, in my ability to help him succeed. So you can imagine my excitement when I got to write him and say, Shoto, we have our own creative space. Come on over. So he came to the States, and uh, he lived in Lake Forest for three months, uh, worked in our back studio towards a solo exhibition in our main gallery. Um, he got us and the community involved in his work, and he was really instrumental in turning our space into place from, into place from the get-go. Um, the title of his exhibition was Inspiration, and it certainly was. He had two-dimensional work, he had a video projection, we had installation of local tree stumps that he painted, uh, a poem that he'd written on, um, and he also had these three-dimensional paintings. We even got to collaborate on a piece, and I integrated my button project with a painting that he painted me. We had a lot of fun. Um, so it's kind of crazy to take a step back and look at all that we've learned and accomplished the last few years of reInvent. Um, it's been just so gratifying to see this place come alive and thrive, not only with our values, but with the values of over hundred, hundreds of artists. Um, um, whether it's someone's hobby or their main goal in life, we hope to continue to reInvent the way people choose and use art in their everyday lives. So I've learned so much about turning space into place and the importance of show and tell. Um, um, I hope that you will join me and the, uh, and the many others driven to see the world as one large space with the ability to turn it into place together. Um, the action is engaging, creating, and learning. The reaction is changed for the better in the form of community, in the form of place.